Hello boys and girls. My name is Miss Chloe and I'm back again with Snapology. I am a science, technology, engineering, art, and math instructor. And today we are going to take a step away from the medieval period. We're going to come back to visit that. But with all of you, you know, um, um, you guys have been trapped in your house, possibly, um, now that things are um, opening back up. I know that my kids recently went to the park and they got their wiggles out and I thought that, you know, today would be a good lesson on parks and gardens. And how fun would it be to build your own Lego park and or garden? So today we're going to learn about two different types of park. An active and passive recreation area. So we'll go into more terminology about that um, later, okay? Students, you will be creating a beautiful green space using inspiration from park designers around the world. Question for you is, do you have a favorite park? I know I have a favorite park where I like to take my children, um, and it's full of fun activities, all right? Um, swings and rock climbing, and that's where I like to take my children. Um, so think about your favorite park while I'm talking, all right? So. Parks and gardens um, are district forms of entertainment um, throughout the entire world, okay? Everywhere and, well, most places has a park or some kind of garden to view. Um, parks are run by either the city, people in, you know, the city who funds the park, funds their construction and maintenance. Maintenance can, can, can include picking up trash or fixing the um, playground structure. Um, whereas gardens, botanical gardens, are created as a um, living archive for various plants and species um, and can, that can be studied. Um, this type of uh, gardens, um, they can also be funded by people, all right? Um, and it's important that we kind of study the public to understand where we're going and appreciate where we're going. All right. Um, can you think of a botanical garden in your head? A botanical garden might have a lot of flowers. Well, by might, um, it probably will. A lot of greenery. Maybe some butterflies and dragonflies. Maybe some mosquitoes. <laughs> so think about those um, little traits within the botanical garden. Now, um, let's dive into a little bit of the two types of park I want to talk about today. So parks can be divided in either two, in an active or passive recreation area. So active um, recreation areas you will find they have more they have more playgrounds or maybe a volleyball area or a basketball area or maybe even a swimming pool or a skate park okay um, these active areas they, they have team sports uh, maybe a soccer team or a football team or even cheerleading all right um, these places will have intense management and maintenance because of the traffic that comes through. For example, if the soccer team is playing soccer and the net breaks, we need maintenance to come in and help with that net. Or if the children are swinging and the swing breaks, all right? There's a lot of kids that are on those swings. So remember to wash your hands, okay? Um, and then we're gonna go back. So we just talked about active. Now we're going to talk about passive recreations. Now passive recreations are the complete opposite. Now some of you might be able to give an example, but have you ever gone with your mom or dad or brother or sister or uncle or aunt and gone hiking? I know I have. So passive recreation areas are a lot of overgrown natural beauty. Um, you're gonna have hiking tra uh, trails, maybe ponds to fish in. And these types of parks, they don't, they don't require a lot of high um, maintenance or high costs, all right? We don't, we don't have to hire people to go out there to take care of a pond um, as much as we do a swing set or a playground set, all right? 
a playground set's gonna need inspections. What if one of the screws comes out and a little, a little four-year-old little girl's running? There's a screw, so there, that um, there's a big difference there. Okay. Also, um, we need to think about why these parks are designed, and I want you to think about why these parks are designed. So, an example I had given was that. Um, you know, it's a place for families to go, right? A place for families to interact and spend time together. But parks can also be a place for exercise. They can be a place to study animals and insects, all right? So we, there's a lot of different reasons why parks are around us. Now, we children need to appreciate these parks around us. For example, um, no littering. And if you see litter on the ground, pick it up, even if it's not yours, okay? It's the right thing to do. Now, today, I have my green um, base plate here because I'm going to think of a my park or garden has a lot of greenery. Now, if you have a brown one and it's sand, that's great. Or even if you have a different colors like blue or red or yellow, uh, purple or pink, good. Use them. And... You children today, you're going to build your own park. What is your park going to have in it? If you were an architect or an engineer, um, what would you design? You know, a lot of the parks around us are designed by architects and engineers. And it's your turn to be the engineer or architect. Or you could wear both hats, okay? so. Are you going to create a bridge that goes across your park and, you know, take some blue Legos and make a, a little stream? Or are you going to have um, a passive recreation where it's natural if you have green pieces to make trees? You can maybe make a little trail, um, maybe some mountains, whatever you want, hills. All right, and maybe some of you have some Lego pieces, animal Lego pieces, and definitely in a passive recreation, you're gonna see a lot more wildlife, right? Um, in passive recreation areas, um, not all the time, sometimes the, the, they leave the wildlife there, and they leave the, um, the homes and dens of these animals there. So, without further ado, Remember to be creative, remember to have fun. This is a fun assignment. And put your thinking cap on and be that engineer and, or be that architect um, and have, once again, have fun. All right, guys, bye-bye for now. I'll see you next time.